so this is sue here welcome to my channel um so today what we're going to do is i'm going to show you the basic stuff that you need for you to start knitting but just the basics guys nothing hectic just a few tools for you to get started for you to start learning to knit so i'm going to start with um the yarn so with me i've got um three types of yarn um but all of them are made of the, the same material so i've got 100 percent acrylics it's unfortunate i don't have um the cotton or the cashmere or the bamboos but this will do so i've got 100 percent acrylics so our yarn comes in different thicknesses as as much as it comes in different colors it comes in different thicknesses so i've got um three ply um i've got two products um this is seagull um since it's my front facing camera it won't come out looking the name looks funny so this is seagull it's a kenyan product this is three ply and it's 100 percent acrylic so this is pretty thin to the feel um and when i use it i usually love i, I double it or i treble it depending on the type of tension that i want to attain so this is three ply pretty cool to work with um the other three ply that i have is woolly knit um this is a zim product shout out to woolly knit um the factory is in south the Torn, and you can go to their facebook page find out about the products and how you can get um this guys here um, they've got really cool yarn and really cool colors as well they've got quite a uh, quite some variety this is their beige um it's three ply and it's 100 percent acrylic it's also pretty thin so i usually triple this i triple it all the time unless i want to make something really thin i, I usually triple this so woolen it um the other one that i love to use um it's quite it's a bit thicker than the three ply so this is the four ply this is mirage and it's a south african product and um, this is really cool to work with i love mirage because it's soft and it comes in cool colors and it's thicker than the three flies so i get um really cool tension with this so i love using mirage but this is a 25 gram balls usually this is what i get on the market um it's smaller than the ones that i've been showing you these are 100 gram balls so this is half of this <laughs> not necessarily because the thicknesses are different but this is way smaller than this so i'd have to use more if i'm using the four ply balls um and um at times you might get confused because the patterns at times they don't say ball of yarn they say skein so that's another name for a ball of yarn okay cool so the other type that i've got the last type that i've got um this is the double knit i'm sure this is this was um charity which is also a south african brand this is the thickest of the ones that i've got unfortunately i don't have the label anymore because this is the last kind i've got so i'm holding to it pretty tightly <laughs> so this is thicker than the other ones that i showed you um and this um is usually used for making scarves for making um cardigans at times if you want um uh, making blankets yes so this is for the bigger projects because it's quite thick and the secret is when you're using um thicker yarn you use thicker needles that's for you to get the desired tension if you use the needles with thick yarn the product tends to be hard to the film so you want it you want your knitted product to be as soft as possible because it's going to come into contact with the skin um something that something someone is wearing so for you to get it soft nice and soft the thicker the yarn the thicker the needle hack number one <laughs> so the next thing that i'm going to show you are your knitting needles so my mom was a knitter she used to knit a lot as soon as she comes in from work she drops everything drops her bags then she gets a knitting needles and this is what she used to use almost all the time that was then guys so the straight knitting needles um the straight knitting needles come with the knob at the end this is to secure your work so that your work doesn't slip off so and the knobs come with something written um a kind of measurement these ones are written 3 comma 5 
So these, uh, this just means that the needle size is 3.5 millimeter. That's the thickness of the, needle, of the needle. So these are 3.5 millimeter needles. So take note, guys, when you're buying um, your, your, your knitting needles as well as when you want to make something, take note of the type, the, the, the size of the knitting needles that you're supposed to use. These are 3.5. I usually use 3.5 for making my booties. Okay. Um, the next type of knitting needle that we have, some call them the magic loop, or but the basic name is the circular needle. Um, it comes in what looks like a circle. So the two knitting needles are joined by this loop here. So these guys, what they do is um, they pretty much secure your work so well. And um, if the, you can knit in what they call the round, you can knit going round without having to shift your needles like we do with the straight needle. So they come in different um, thicknesses as well. But unfortunately with um, circular needles, they don't come marked. Just the packet is marked the size. But once you get it out of the pack, there's no way of you knowing what size it is. But you can get off the market. Um, there's a gauge that you, you can use with holes that you can insert your needle to ascertain the size. So these don't come marked. The packet, only the packet is marked. So this is a 4,5 knitting needle. And the loop lengths also come in different lengths. So this is a pretty short one. This is a 60 centimeter loop. This is a 3,5 millimeter needle. But the loop length is... Um, 80 centimeters. Why are the lengths different? Well, it pretty much depends on what you want to make. The shorter loops are usually used when you want to make seamless hats, you want to make um, your gloves, you want to make your socks. So you use um, the shorter needle, the shorter loop size, sorry. Um, the 3.5 millimeter, the one that I have, it's 80 centimeters. This is pretty cool when you're making cardigans, when you're making something that is wide. Yes, that's when you need your longer loop size. So these are my favorite. I use these all the time. The moment I started using this, I didn't want to use the straight needles. So the straight needles are just in my, my museum. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, the last type of needle that I'm going to show you is called the double pointed needle. So this is a double pointed needle. This is what it looks like. It's got points at both ends. Um, this used to be used to knit in the round, what the circular needle does now. And so it used um, maybe four or five or six of these to knit in the round. So you're making your socks, you're making your gloves. So this is what they used to use. Um, now they usually use the stitch markers. Say you've got um, 10 stitches that you want to put aside that you want to add into later, you want to knit later, then you use this as a stitch marker. So that's pretty much it on our knitting needles. Um, the other thing that you would need to have by you all the time is your scissors. I use a thread cutter because this is pretty precise, smaller. That's, um, and it cuts my yarn pretty close to my work without um, making a mess of my work. So I use a thread cutter. And it's quite, it's very cheap as well. <laughs> so you'd rather use this than a scissors. Then you're going to need a tapestry needle. But then I couldn't get one. So I'm just using an ordinary big needle for me to sew together my seams when I'm done knitting my work. Um, the other thing that you're going to need is your tape measure yes so say you're making um bigger projects like a scarf like a cardigan like a blanket you can't be counting your rows all the time counting rows gets tedious so this is what you use to measure how far you've come with your work is it long enough for you to bind off Ta -da. the last thing that i have here uh, plastic paper clips. You will note that with most patterns they ask you to use what they call stitch markers. So st what stitch markers are used for? They used to mark um, certain points on your work. Like um, from this point you, st you start your increases. From this point you see you should bind off. So for you to recall those points you use stitch markers. But then I couldn't find any so I had to improvise and this was such a good hack. Because these look like stitch markers they come in pretty cool 
um, colors. So this is me that did this. So this is the white one. This is the blue one. So because these come in plastic, these are plastic paper clips. They don't fray your wick. And the colors are pretty cool for you to quickly see the marks that you've made. So hack number two, guys. Use plastic paper clips when you can't find stitch markers. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Please subscribe to my channel. Invite your friends to subscribe so you can learn to meet. Um, like my videos, leave comments, feedback, everything. I really appreciate the support, guys. So catch me in the next video where I'll be teaching you how to... There are two types of bind-off. So there's the tight or the ordinary bind-off that you're used to or the stretchy bind-off that's really cool when you're making hats or you're making socks. Um, which makes it easy for you to put them on. So catch you in the next video. Thanks for joining me.